Thanks for being here, everybody. It is a Wednesdays that we look forward to on this show because our former colleague and student of presidential and uh, international American history comes through when it comes to politics. He really is top of the heap. His show, he does a podcast that's daily offered, is uh, called Around the Political World with John Rothman. And he's John Rothman. Hi, John. Good morning, Mark. And I uh, agree John with is, him. Yeah. I'm, I know I'm risking yeah. my position on this show, but Courtney <laughs> deserves Courtney deserves great accolades. Oh, well, uh, accolades is a ding word. I, um, uh, I would... Listen to me. <laughs> I don't want to hear you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> she is doing very, very well, which is impressive in uh, Mark's Madness. We'll update that a little before the top of the hour. Now, John, uh, look... I've read a lot about different issues that are influencing uh, the American public in polling and the disposition toward um, the current president, Joe Biden, the disposition toward the former president, uh, Donald Trump. I'm wondering, uh, and I really want, wanted to ask you this for some time, uh, you know, you're such a student of political history. What issues actually land? And also, if is there a new arithmetic as to what issues land for political uh, aspirants like uh, Biden and Trump, or are the same issues that would land with people 40 years ago still landing with people today? No, it's new issues. I mean, Ukraine, Gaza, completely new. The question of uh, the Supreme Court and whether or not people will be able to take a pill to have an abortion, relatively new. Uh, you know, they're recurring undercurrents but I think the issues uh, are completely dynamic. And you can see that now uh, in the fact that I have a list here of at least 20 different topics we could discuss today. So you have topics, but it feels to me like, especially if I see these Trump voters and they're, um, you know, the 30% diehards and then another 10% who are just kind of a GOPers being pulled along in the whitewater uh Mm -hmm. rafting trip that is politics. Uh, wait, wait, Whitewater was Bill Clinton. But, <laughs> uh, but people, it seems, vote with their gut. I think they do, but they also vote on the cumulative record. Uh, I think Donald Trump is digging a hole that is rather deep. And, and we don't know yet what is going to happen on the immunity case before the Supreme Court. And let me just tell you, that is going to be a real teller, because if the Supreme Court affirms the principle that a president is above the law, the whole dynamic changes. And then again, if the court says Donald Trump is subject to everything else, he's not above the law, again, it changes. And look, all I can tell you is on this question of a woman's right to choose, that is the issue. I was sitting next to a woman yesterday at a luncheon who said to me, John, in my opinion, that is the major issue. Will a woman control her own body? And I remarked, if somebody tried to tell me what to do with my body, uh, I can't say on uh, public airwaves what I would respond, but you can just imagine. Well, it's interesting that you point to this because uh, on the one hand, just on the specifics, and we are going to talk to David Katz, a former federal prosecutor who can speak to the Methapristone questions that even the court is having right now, which are associated with standing. That is the connection that a plaintiff has to a legal action. But- right. uh, uh, more to the point, just in general, the Supreme Court uh, took the opportunity to throw Roe over and then throw the issue of abortion back to the states. But now, because there is a pending effort to get rid of mefepristone, which has become sort of the choice for many women, since a lot of the other choices are slowly being closed off, the problem comes as to the feds now intervening with our lives nationwide. It's not being thrown back to the states. The feds are getting very much involved. And that, that's the key, because uh, this is a question of individual responsibility. Let me point out in Alabama, the state legislature just tipped from being controlled by uh, Republicans to Democrats by one vote, one victory, over the issue of a woman's right to choose. I, I do not believe people understand the depth of the passion about this issue. And I have said it before, I think I said it uh, with you uh, months and months ago, this is going to be a major issue in the campaign. There are some realities, sadly, John, if you're a Democrat, uh, it's possible and probably likely that you'll take back the House uh, for many of the reasons um, that you've described, that 
women are going to come out probably in big numbers, and there, there are also many House seats have, that are up. Um, the Senate, not such a uh, pretty picture for the Democrats. They may actually lose the Senate. It depends who the Republicans nominate. Uh, they just had a nominee selected who is a Trumpist, 100%, uh, in one particular state. Uh, I, I think all bets are off, Mark, and you and I are going to be following this, monitoring it very carefully. And if I want to pray on it, maybe I'll spend fifty nine ninety nine for a Trump Bible. There's no bottom to Trump. There's no bottom to his rhetoric. There's no bottom to his side hustle. There's no bottom to the fleecing that he embarks upon. He's the this Elmer story. Gantry of American politics. Now tell everybody who Elmer Gantry was. Elmer Gantry, the novel and the film, is about a preacher who who rips everybody off. In fact, when Trump first announced on, on dear old KGO, I played the music of Elmer Gantry from the movie starring Burt Lancaster because it fit exactly. This is the ultimate huckster. But his chickens are coming home to roost, if I may be so bold as to say it. He has immeasurable problems which are going to grow. Uh, and I think one of the most interesting things was Mike Pence this last week. You and I haven't spoken since Mike Pence announced that he will not vote for Donald Trump in 2024. Uh, I'm waiting for Mike Pence to be put on the stand under oath because he's an honest man and he'll tell the truth. <clears throat> and if that happens, Donald Trump is in deep, deep trouble about January 6th. Well, I mean, it's uh, it seems clear based on the constellation of testimony that, you know, Trump was very much involved and aware of what would likely happen on January 6th. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and don't, don't forget the Stormy Daniels case, which most people relegate to the uh, dark corners of political scandal, uh, that Donald Trump played a direct role. Uh, Michael Cohen, uh, who may be a convicted felon, but who in fact was the man who set everything up. These are all people that are going to be on the stand. And look, I don't know how the election will turn out 100%. But I can tell you what I really believe. You summed it up. You said 30% of people will vote for Trump no matter what. 10% are on the fence. You can't be elected president with 40 to 45% of the vote. It just isn't going to happen. Well, uh, let me. Can I say a word about Robert Kennedy? I'm well, I was fascinated. just about to say you can, actually, if uh, Robert Kennedy gets in as well, a third he's party. he's in. And, is and the relevant. question is his running mate. And I spoke this morning about the fact, other than the fact that she, uh, uh, through marriage and divorce, is a billionaire. Uh, she had no qualifications to be vice president of the United States. And if you believe that the first critical decision a candidate for president makes is who his running mate is going to be, Bobby Kennedy Jr. just failed dramatically, which is not to say she's not a decent, honorable person, but she has no background in international relations. You don't know where she stands on any issue. All we know is that she has a child with autism and that uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr., she believes, I guess, in, in Bobby Kennedy's uh, theories that uh, vaccinations cause autism. I mean, I'm assuming that. But whatever the case may be, uh, this is going to be a fascinating moment. Uh, but going back to Mike Pence, just watch. Just watch. Because if he turns on the president, uh, that is going to be really something. And for all intents I don't know. It wasn't yeah. a big deal when he decided not to uh, endorse the president. It, that that story lasted about 11 hours. I mean, it's crazy yes. now. It, yeah, it, but it, you know. understand, and everybody needs to understand, he was an eyewitness to what happened on January 6th. You put him on the stand under oath. The one thing you can say about Mike Pence, whether you like him or not, <clears throat> he's an honest man. You had you truth. had credible witnesses in that J six uh, hearing to begin with, John. You know you there had Cassie Hutch Cassidy right. Hutchinson was under oath, and she had damning testimony. And I again, I, yes, I'm not saying it, it didn't not land. Yes, it was a legal but... case. It was a congressional hearing. Okay, here you're talking about guilt or innocence by a jury of peers. Okay, and what the evidence will be. And I want to come back to the fact the most important uh, decision the court will make is on the question of presidential immunity. If he doesn't have immunity. This thing is wide open, uh, and well, we'll see what happens. The more interesting question, Mark, if I may be so bold, is what happens if Trump implodes before the convention? Uh, and that's the reason Mike Pence and Ron DeSantis and, uh, and uh, all the others are suspending their candidacy right. so that they can be eligible. 
Well, that's their that's their long shot. That's their lottery ticket. Uh, there's no sign that he's going to be imploding. I mean, you know, this guy is uh, he's taking incoming legal fire like crazy, and it doesn't seem to affect his standing in the polls. In fact, so far he he seems to get stronger. It's I, not I the go... polls, Mark. It's not. Yeah. He's already won the nomination. If if he's still standing when the when the nomination is made, right? It has to do with the judgment of the American people following legal decisions, and the polls indicate that about 30% of Americans, if he's really convicted of something, will not vote for him. And that's the end of his candidacy. Well, you know what I say about 30% of the Americans? There's always been, in this country, 30 to 35% idiots. <laughs> yeah, so those yeah, are they wouldn't the... be idiots if they didn't vote for him. Wouldn't you I agree get on that? They, I get it. But I'm, I, I think the many are saying, and the group that says, I wouldn't vote for him if he were convicted of something, I think that group, says that on the spot and like so many polls and so much so much man on the street stuff when the reality rolls around they'll they'll punch the but neither one of us can know uh, they'll can, punch can him for trump spend a moment on the holy trinity of democratic politics kim McAllister alluded to the breaking news today that barack obama bill clinton and joe biden uh, three democratic presidents uh, are going to gang up if you will to present the democratic case and I would also remind you of another very significant thing. Biden and Harris are campaigning together. Uh, and one of the reasons they're doing that is to boost Harris's stock. So my, my suggestion is we have a long way to go until November. Sure, sure. Uh, and it, it's a fair point. Uh, you know, on Harris, uh, you get this uh, from a, Harris is not a great speaker, often don't know what she's saying. I don't know about that. I don't think that. I mean, you can say what no, you want. No, she's actually um, very articulate. I've interviewed I, her. I agree. You, I, I, you, you, can, you can ding her or, or you know, um, bang on her in certain ways, criticize her, but I don't think you can speak, criticize the way she speaks. I think she but speaks very well. Vice presidents. Every yeah. vice president becomes a whipping person right. because uh, there's no accountability for a vice president. A vice president is the servant of a president, pure and simple. Uh, you know, Trump, this is interesting from Norm. I mean, this is good. Trump seems to be guilty. Why is it taking so long to try him? We'll talk to David Katz about that. But it is true, John, that he's winning the essential delay tactic plan he's no, i winning. don't think so april 12th he is going to uh there's going to be a jury select april 15th rather there's going to be a jury selected and uh i think if the supreme court rules as i think they will he may face the music dealing with january 6th sooner rather than later it took a long time to get richard nixon let me remind everybody the watergate break-in was uh, june 17th 1972 nixon did not resign until august 9th 1974. And I want to remind people there were no real court cases involved. But this had to do in the end with Congress coming to a conclusion. This is a completely different. It also situation. had to do with the, his own party coming to him essentially and saying, Mr. President, I think you should step down. Once, right? once the once the tape was revealed, the smoking gun tape, it was over. And Nixon knew it. Everybody knew it. And look, eventually, that's the key with Donald Trump. When will people understand this guy is a huckster? Uh, and a dangerous huckster to boot. Go ahead, Kim. Do you think, you guys, that Donald Trump wants to be thrown in to jail and for contempt of court? Because here's what the story says, that less than a day, less than 24 hours after a judge puts a gag order on him, he has verbally attacked that judge's daughter on a post on social media. It's like, you're doing what? Do you, I mean, maybe it's a publicity stunt because he wants to get thrown in the slammer for a few hours. I don't know. But he went on to um, social media and he said that the um, judge is suffering from an acute case of Trump derangement syndrome. His daughter represents pick a politician, um, and just posted a picture of me behind bars. Her obvious goal makes it completely impossible for me to get a fair trial. And on and on he went. Just after the judge said, don't do this. Yeah, well, that's Donald Trump. And he is going to continue to do it. It appeals to his base. But these things catch up. It may take a while, but it's going to catch up on Donald Trump. I believe in the American system. And if, if Donald Trump is able to prevail... It'll be a tremendous blow, in my judgment, this is just one person's opinion, uh, to the American system. Uh, I'll ask uh, David Katz about that, the former federal prosecutor, so we'll get uh, another opinion. 
Uh, as you know, I do not have the faith in the American system that John Rothman does. In fact, I think the, the American system is effed up. I'll say it straight up. In fact, you can start with the Electoral College because you know as well as I do, John, that we wouldn't be sweating Donald Trump winning. In fact, he will probably lose by 10 million votes, but he could still win the presidency because of how effed up our system is, and you know it. And you, 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 don't hide from me, John Rothman. I know you know it. Listen, I look at the last election. I saw what happened in the last election, and I saw Donald Trump go down to defeat because swing states wouldn't vote for him. Donald Trump keeps talking. He's going to dig his own hole. I have great faith in that. And we've just seen it in Alabama. You just saw it in Alabama where the Republicans were defeated. The Democrats now control the legislature by one vote, but they control it. And I want to just point out to you, that's what matters. You have to have faith in the American people. If you don't, where are we? Uh, Sandy says, I used to have faith in our system before Trump came along and changed everything for the worst. Well, he's but he definitely, hasn't changed it. He he's has changed not the political. Changed he, I think it's a fair point, uh, uh, John. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I'll, and I'll shut up real quick. Oh, sorry. But no, no. Be, I, I, I do. I want to make, He has changed the nature of the debate and the dialogue and the issues around the, the whole idea that you could serve up BS as a short order chef the way Donald Trump does and get away with it and actually seize a narrative through media like Fox News, I think that has changed a, a, a lot of what's going on right now in America. I won't disagree with you, but I will tell you that I believe we will rise above it. We have to rise above it as a nation. Uh, I have to believe, because of my own sense of security in the United States of America, that the American people will rise to the occasion. And not only that, I think our legal system is going to rise to the occasion as well. I think Donald Trump is in big legal trouble. There's no question about it. And we just have to see how it plays out, Mark. Uh, but just the on the legal truth, legal point, I get this. I lost my faith with Kavanaugh. I mean, the, the legal system has been hijacked as well, John. It's, it's, it's hijacked by um, doctrinaire, uh, theologically informed uh, I wouldn't disagree with you, but look at what's going to happen with the Supreme Court on immunity. Look what they're going to do on this abortion issue. The court has demonstrated, and I think it's, it's an interesting point, there are two members of the court who I don't trust at all, Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito. The other members of the court seem to want to be reasonable. And the most important thing is Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, who clearly doesn't want the Roberts court to go down in history as the court which blew American democracy. So, you know, I, I know it's, it's, it's purely hypothetical. Purely hypothetical. There's no way to determine today who's right or wrong. But I believe that in November, Mark, you and I will have this conversation. And either I will be pulling out my hair, because, what little I have, because I will be so upset, or you will be saying, John, thank God you were right. Yeah, One way no, or the I mean, other. I, look, I'm, I'm here to pro, you know, provide oftentimes the pushback, which I think you know, just makes for a healthy debate or dialogue. But sure I, it does. That's what I, I love. Obviously, we're all we're all hoping for the same thing. So uh, check out his podcast. It is Around the Political World with John Rothman. He is John Rothman, and his podcast is scorchingly hot. So congratulations, yeah, Mark, sir. Mark, may I just point out, there yes. is no litmus test to listen to the Mark Thompson show. Unlike Ron or Romney, McDaniel, and NBC, on this show, you can have any point of view, you can express your point of view, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly why you should support the Mark Thompson show. Program. Oh, thank you, sir. Actually, we're going to talk about the uh, McDaniel thing with David Katz because I want to ask him whether she might have a case for, if not wrongful termination, they're going to send to give her a check. I have a I think. question that you can yeah. ask uh, Katz, and that is this Is she now a martyr? Will the fact that she is being dismissed because of her views affect how people view her? And what will Donald Trump say? Will well, Donald uh, Trump uh, now, uh, honestly, that's now not embrace her? Yeah, that's not a cat's question because he's a lawyer, but I would, uh, that's actually a question more for you. But what I would say is th the cat's question is can she sue after she was pilloried by every anchor on MSNBC and NBC on Meet the Press when they went after her that way? Depends now, on the deal. What's here, the here, but here, let me let me finish, sir, and I will be able Can to. Can you let him finish, sir? Yeah, okay. You think it was uh, your show? I want to make the point that she didn't say anything that you couldn't anticipate she was exactly who she said she was who you knew she was when you hired her yeah. so for that reason if they could possibly with the help of a lawyer 
pro prove damages of some kind, damage to reputation. That's what made me think of it when you talk about reputation. Uh, maybe there's a bigger check in her future. I guess I'm might, just going to have to listen elevate to the rest of the Mark Thompson show okay. to find out the answers. <laughs> and of course, I love you, John. can listen if they subscribe. So please do. <laughs> John, thank you. Uh, it is Around the Political World with John Rothman. Thanks, John. See you next week. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.